we have, uh, just before I launch uh, the, the last panel of the day, we have, uh, you, if you remember, if you were here, I, I, I talk, talked about uh, dinner tonight with uh, Badu and a, a party. And we have winners of the most retweeted tweets of, uh, of the web so far. We'll get to that dinner. Again, we, they can't get everybody in. So let's see a short video just to get a taste, then I'll give you a few hints. Very excited. We are so happy to be here at the Badu party. So that was in London. And uh, Badu likes to use social networking. So if you guys want to join. So first, the winners for the five seats at the dinner is Eric Delcroix at R Delcroix, Alexandre Johan at Joanito Soré, at Soso, Jacques Froissant, at Altaïd, and Glenn Le Santo, at Le Santo, we'll tweet all of that. You're invited to dinner tonight with uh, Badu at 8 o'clock. And for the party, as of 10 p.m., I know uh, some of you have found a way in just at Badu, like just pester them, talk to them, and uh, you, know, you might find a way there. Um, our last uh, panel of the day is um, about the European tech ecosystem, and I think it's an awesome panel that, I've, uh, that we have here. Really happy to uh, welcome again Jamila Knowles, uh, who is the UK editor of the Next Web, surrounded by Katya Gaika, um, who is the deputy director of the IT cluster of Skolkovo in Moscow, Fleur Pellerin, who is the minister delegate of small and medium-sized enterprise, and Joanna Shields, oh, I'm sorry, I missed innovation and digital economy. And Joanna Shields, who is the chief executive of the Tech City Investment Organization. Please join me on stage. I think I've probably got one of the most impressive panels, certainly of today, if not maybe for the event, because this is what women in leadership in technology looks like. And I'd like to hear that round of applause one more time. Can I do that one more time? Yeah. That was all right. Okay. <laughs> and so I'd like you ladies to tell us more about the organizations that you work with and things that you do so that we're all on the same page for a panel discussion. So. Katya, explain to us what you do with Skolkovo. Um, Skolkovo is a Russian government initiative that aims at um, aspiring young um, youngsters and not so young people um, to become entrepreneurs. And um, the initiative started two years ago. And the idea was to replicate a model of Silicon Valley and you know, do it in Moscow, in Russia. And as of now, um, so far, it's been um, about $4 billion dedicated to this initiative. One third of it goes to fund the project startups in five different uh, directions. IT, biomed, energy efficiency, nuclear and teleco, and, um, and biomed, as I said. So um, the idea was that um, Russia has a lot of oil money, right? And we need to invest them into uh, what we do the best. So, and so far, it's been... Um, uh, obvious that Russia has not only rich in um, resources, and oil resources, but also rich in talent. And um, for instance, just one number. Uh, in the beginning of uh, the 90s, about 74% of Russian population had the secondary degrees. As of now, it's probably about 54%, but still quite an impressive number. And historically, we've been strong in um, computation, computational sciences, like math and physics, and things like that. So uh, therefore, we now invest in this remaining talent, and we're trying to attract those who already flew the country. So they come back, they build their businesses. And uh, I think we've been pretty successful. In two last years, we attract about 700 different startups. So they now function under Skolkov umbrella, and we provide funding, we give them tax breaks, and a lot of things, wonderful things. That sounds yeah. very good. OK, yeah. and Fleur, can you tell us a bit more about your day-to-day -day work? Uh, it's difficult, because I have a very uh, vast portfolio, including SMEs. So SMEs, it's 97% of French companies. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Uh, innovation and uh, digital economy. And it's the first time that there is a, 
a, a minister for innovation. So I think it's quite interesting because it shows that the move of the present government is to really to have a strategy uh, that mixes innovation because we are conscious that our small companies, small businesses in France are not innovative enough. So uh, my day-to-day uh, -day work is to try to f create the right environment, uh, the right business environment, uh, the right solutions, to provide the good solutions for our companies to uh, make their digital transition and to uh, also to uh, innovate more, to uh, uh, make disruptive uh, innovations. Uh, so it includes the ref um, thinking about the right uh, uh, low uh, tax fiscal environment, the right uh, regulation, regulatory uh, environment, and also what incentives we can uh, uh, put in place to encourage uh, entrepreneurs to create their jobs, to create especially jobs and companies in the digital uh, economy. And my big project right now is to create a very big uh, uh, district, digital district in Paris. Uh, and I'm working a lot on, on that to uh, attract entrepreneurs, to work with universities, work with the laboratories, and I think we have uh, very uh, good assets and very good uh, uh, competitive edges in France. And we just need a little sparkle to put it together and uh, uh, have a very, uh, very good uh, uh, environment for digital economy in Paris and all over France, because we have a lot of clusters also in, uh, in all the regions of France. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. OK. And so, Joanna, we're not going to be too hard on you, because I understand you have a new role. Um, can you tell us about the transition and what you're doing now? Um, yes, actually, it's my second day in this role. So <laughs> really nice to nice. meet all of you. <laughs> um, I have, for 27 years, been on the other side. I've been a, an entrepreneur and a technology um, participant in the in the you know technology economy, and um, and a technology executive. Um, I've just recently moved into this role or accepted this role because of. You know, what's been going on in the UK is quite extraordinary. Um, two years ago, our Prime Minister announced the recognition of what was already an organic and growing and vibrant technology community with this initiative called Tech City. But around that, what's been happening is there's been some government policies that are really truly global leading in the sense there's um, policies around entrepreneur visas, there's policies around um, patent and recognizing and, and encouraging companies to create um, IP and technology in Britain and creating incentives around that to make it more um, interesting and compelling for companies around the world to come and locate in Britain. And what's been happening organically was recognized two years ago as this Tech City initiative. And now we have over 1,300 companies in this cluster in East London, which the way to think of it is as the nucleus of technology and digital um, businesses in, in the UK. But of course, in the UK, we have an uh, extraordinary um, digital economy all across the country. So um, we're just hitting that two-year anniversary, and I'm delighted to be here at this moment in time because a lot of work has been done um, around creating the right environment for startups and encouraging businesses and giving them what they need. And the last thing I'll say is that all of these policies were born out of the conversations that were happening with entrepreneurs and startups and small businesses in the region. So in terms of this government, they're open for business for feedback and they're taking all that on board and trying to create the fastest growing technology cluster in the world. Wow, okay, it's ambitious, it sounds good. And so, to what extent, ladies, do you think that governments should be getting involved with technology? Is it something that could also work in the private sector, or is it something that actually really needs a bigger, steadier boost from governments? Well, um, I just want to give a perspective, um, like historical perspective. Um, uh, for instance, in Russia, it's been um, quite a modus operandi that uh, you know, ra uh, government was creating um, special cities where they would put you know, students, uh, professors, um, and let them work together and you know, run free from you know, thinking about you know, everyday kind of mundane things. And um, so far, I think we started in about six, in, in the 60s, it started. And we have about 20, 25 um, cities like that, so like Dubna, um, Tomsk, Novosibirsk, and uh, the, the cities that were 
created speci for specific reasons, some for nuclear things, some for IT, some for um, biomedical research. And, you know, some of them are, of course, secret, so, you know, I cannot quite just um, uh, talk about those because I don't know much. Um, but those initiatives were quite successful, so many things came out of those um, initiatives. So I believe that Skolkova and, you know, basically the role of a government is to give this initial push when, you know, uh, the... The place between um, science and commercialization of science. This is where government role is crucial, because um, this is where venture capital not always ready to jump in, right? So we have to, you know, this transfer technology from science to uh, the business is where government, I think, the most um, effective. And this is what we are doing. So our role is to help commercialization of the research and development ideas. So we do fund um, startups, but the ideas have to have some scientific routine and some you know, uh, science background of the team. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Fleur, is it a, a balance of science and technology or more business-led when it comes to France? I think uh, there are different uh, levels. Uh, I think the government needs to uh, invest some money and to lead the policy in terms of infrastructures, which are critical. For instance, uh, the president of France just committed and pledged to uh, deploy the very high-speed broadband in France in the next 10 years. So it's a huge, huge investment. It's about 30 billion euros. Uh, and it's the kind of thing that needs a, a government push and a, a really a, a, a public policy. So I think this is critical. I think I agree with uh, Katia. I think um, it's very important that the transfer of technology, when the risk is high and when you're not sure that the, of the profitability of an activity uh, will, you know, if you have a spin-off from a laboratory, a public laboratory, for instance, you take a big risk. And sometimes the private uh, sector won't finance, won't fund uh, the, the uh, innovation. So in that case, I think the, maybe some, some time the public sector uh, is... Um, uh, legitimate to intervene uh, financially, for instance, to take the risk, to assume the risk that the private sector won't take, because innovation is always a kind of, uh, 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 it's a challenge, it's a, it's a bet, so, uh, and that's what we, we're working on too, on this uh, uh, small public-private companies that can uh, take the risk from uh, the uh, research until the mar marketing and the, uh, of, of the product. Um, but I agree, I think when you, when you create a cluster, for instance, uh, the public sector is not the best, uh, uh, has not the best position to choose, for instance, which companies to put in and which companies to, to help accelerate because I think the private uh, uh, funds, private equity uh, sector has a better insight of, on what are the good companies to invest in. So I, I would suggest that the public sector doesn't intervene a lot and sometimes it's better for companies that the public sector stays a bit uh, uh, outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, Joanna, with the infrastructure in the UK also, do you think that the government is pushing enough to, to make sure that it is deep infrastructural help? Because we hear about small businesses who go through accelerators and they, they do well, they do great. Sure but things like ground rent or rates for mm -hmm. even renting an office to, to propel your business that bit further, still very expensive, it seems like, yeah. you know, to make sure that the government is not just giving lip service to this. Yeah, I, I think in the UK, um, in these times of austerity, the government, you know, is not in a position to make a lot of direct investment. In fact, no direct investment. Everything that's happened around the tech city environment has been primarily driven by you know, VCs and, and venture and, and private equity companies. It's been driven by big companies who want to, who recognize the talent that's coming together there and the energy that's being created there and the ideas and the opportunities. Um, for instance, Google set up the Google campus and it's seven floors of startups. So what, what you say is it's, it's they're creating in, in an environment for startups to thrive. And many companies um, are hosting, I just left Facebook, we were hosting developer garages and various other things to sort of bring the community together and to spark that innovation and those ideas. And it's in the interest of those companies to invest in and support because, you know, they buy companies, they invest in companies, they come up with ideas, they partner with those companies. Mm -hmm. So the investment's not primarily been from the government because it's a really difficult time, but we're um, catalyzing a community of larger organizations, universities playing a major role in this as well, and organizations that are trying to develop skills 
in, across the UK, but primarily in this region as well, around technology and coding and, and um, you know, how do you start a business, all those types of sort of environments where you, you learn and go and, and study and, and bounce ideas off of other people. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if we return back to you again for another question. Okay. In which case, what is the UK doing to attract larger tech businesses? I mean, other than the, the tax leaps that make really big headlines, but I mean, is there something there that would attract the, the bigger technology businesses from around the world to make sure that they have a base there too? There's um, definitely a recognition of, of what's happening organically in this part of London um, and across you know, the region. Um, since the Olympics, it's been a, a really vibrant and exciting time. And you know, London is the cultural center, and it is um, a very sort of attractive place for companies to locate businesses. Um, you know, the largest um, advertising and creative industries are located in the UK, and all the top advertising agencies and creative and digital media agencies have offices there. So that makes it very attractive for ideas and sparking, you know, innovation. Um, but the bigger companies, it, there's no better city than London, if you think about it. If you look at the US, you have to go to Washington, Los Angeles, you know, San Francisco, and New York to get everything you get in the you know, the, the square mileage of London, you know, you get, you get the government, you get access to that. You, you know, you have the financial services industry, you have um, all the creative industries, you know, film, television, you know, and everything in New York are all in one place. So it's brilliant. Okay, and so how does that reflect then? How do you attract big businesses to, to Paris and beyond, to, to different cities around France? Uh, I think we have different, um, uh, incentives for, for big companies. I think, for, first of all, we have very good universities and very good engineers. So I think it's a, uh, France is a good place for uh, tech uh, companies to uh, invest because they're sure they will find their talent. And, uh, and we have also very good creative um, uh, students. Uh, in the schools like Gobelin, who uh, are involved in, uh, in 3D and uh, animation and movie uh, business. So uh, I think it's a uh, worldwide uh, known and many French students, uh, former students, are working in the Silicon Valley, like six, uh, uh, 60,000, I think. So uh, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, very well known that we have good, uh, uh, good education system. Uh, also, we have a very in in interesting uh, research tax credit that we are consolidating right now and extending to innovation. That is, if you want to build a prototype, you will be eligible to the tax credit. So I think this tool is always uh, mentioned by big companies because it's uh, big companies and small companies are uh, eligible. It's always mentioned as something very attractive uh, uh, in France. And we also have these clusters I was talking about, 17 France, which are, I think, uh, a place where big companies can meet with smaller businesses and find innovation and find patents. And so I think it's, uh, it, the whole environment is, uh, is uh, I think, a very uh, interesting um, uh, uh, business environment for, for big companies. Mm -hmm. And so, Katia, thinking about the landscape of Russia being so vast, rather than, uh, I know that sometimes in the UK and maybe also in France, uh, maybe tech media and ministers are accused of focusing on their capital city. You, can you really afford to do that with a place as big as Russia? I mean, you have cities afar with far different cultures as well. So how does Skokovo deal with being in a huge geographical space? Well, that's um, actually <clears throat> a very timely question because this is what we asked ourselves about two years ago, that Russia is uh, huge. We have about 140 million people living there and you know, another 130 million you know, speaking Russian, former Soviet Union and uh, now CIS countries. So when we ask this question, and we realize that Skolko hasn't been built yet, yeah, and it's still a project for the next few years, I think, at least, um, we realized that there should be some sort of virtual um, solution for that. And uh, we um, decided that all the companies that apply uh, for a Skolka residency, um, which means that they're going to have a zero tax, a zero uh, profit tax, zero VAT tax, you know, 20% reduction on all social taxes, so it's a lot of benefits besides the possible grant. Um, we um, let them stay where they are, you know, in all over the Russia. So we have about 15 different big cities that now participate in this program. And, uh, but this is only for the residents. However, for the big companies just wanted to uh, continue on what Flora was talking, Andrea. Um, 
Um, we have about 32 big companies such as Intel's, Microsoft, SAP's, and um, things like that um, committing to um, have research and development facilities in Skolkova. And they're not only committing in words, but they actually committed about a billion dollars to spend on those labs. So um, we realized that it should be some sort of a solution that works, um, that we provide guarantees. We as a government foundation, we provide guarantees for all the parts of the ecosystem the startups that they're going to have a place to stay and all the um, benefits going to work for them, for big companies that they're going to find the best resources because we're going to have a new university. Even though Moscow is incredible, we have about 65 universities just in Moscow alone. So I don't know how, why we have so many. Maybe we don't need one more university, which we're building now. But it's going to be graduate level together with MIT. So it's going to be attracting students from all over the world. And I think you know those combinations of factors, that it's going to be primary um, real estate facilities, it's going to be a lot of um, um, wonderful talent available on the ground, and you know, all the startups from all over the Russia, even though some of them are going to be virtual, because you know, Novosibirsk and Irkutsk is just you know, eight plus hours away, so probably <laughs> they should stay where they are. And I think this is how it works. So it's, uh, we don't uh, probably find a magic solution, but we try different things, and you know, whichever is going to work, yeah, we'll take all. And so, Fleur, how do you ensure also that the rest of France uh, feels your love for technology and not just Paris? Um, I think we, um, we already, I, I talked about the 70 clusters, so that's a lot. And uh, some of them are very, involved, very much involved in digital uh, economy, either in media or images or network or uh, um, mobile technologies. So I think it's uh, quite important to, to have the, these um, cities to develop the ecosystem because what what is uh, often the case, and it's also a bit the case in Paris, where we have a lot of startups. I think we have more than 2,000 startups in Paris, but they are a bit everywhere in Paris, and they cannot take a full advantage of the proximity that exists in the Silicon Valley or in in London, maybe, or in places where there's a concentration, a geographical concentration of uh, of uh, startups and big companies. So I think we're going to help the local government to develop this kind of, uh, of places. And we have a couple of cities like Rennes in Brittany, like Nantes, for instance, where you can see the em em emerging uh, digital districts and uh, where schools settle, where uh, big companies settle, where um, uh, startups, incubators, accelerators settle. And it's, I think it's a very, very efficient uh, uh, thing to, to have this pro this proximity because you see that people do business while they are taking some coffee or it's it, it's really like that so I want to encourage this uh, this movement and especially in Paris yeah. I just you know, <laughs> I don't know if, if it works. Um, I just want to ask Fleur a question. Uh, because we were traveling before we decided on Skolkova uh, location. We were traveling around the world, seeing different incubators in different zones, economic zones, how it works. We realized that you know, California has this you know, magic weather component, which also had Sophia Antipolis. Right, so, and we were thinking, it's sort of the same thing, right, combination, wonderful weather, classic location, near Paris, but somehow Sophia Antipolis is not as famous as Silicon Valley, so what's, what's, uh, what, what happened there? And, uh, I think we could, hello? <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe because the, crit the critical mass is uh, not sufficient, and that's what I think uh, uh, we should help the government can help give more exposition, international exposition to this, uh, to these places. And, uh, uh, but also I think it's very important to, for us to have that in Paris because we still have uh, places where you can find uh, 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 rents that are not too expensive for startups. And it's I think it's quite critical for, for, for young companies. Um, and uh, you have, uh, uh, it's an international hub uh, for, for smaller, uh, clusters. It's of course it's more difficult to uh, uh, attract um, uh, maybe bigger companies because uh, its uh, transportation are, are not so easy and uh, sort, sort, sort of things. But I think we can really work on and leverage uh, these clusters by uh, helping the companies to uh, gather in the same place and uh, bring inside some laboratories, uh, universities. So I think it's really, the proximity is uh, critical and maybe it's n not been done enough before. Ah, so it's not the, the weather that is a key component. Also, <laughs> but you know, in Rennes, the weather is 
we can't compete not as on good, weather but uh, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But we were trying to build some. So I'm sorry, I'm yeah. still in the discussion. But we were thinking of building a dome on top of <laughs> snow cover, so we you I know like save that. the sun from the uh, from good. the summer, and then Sounds during the good, winter yeah. it gets back. So, but it's an interesting question, yeah. and one that does come up quite a lot. Now, Joanna and I were talking about this earlier. Is we we enjoy what comes of Silicon Valley, and we like the cities around it, Palo Alto, San Francisco. But why would you want to be Silicon Valley? Why can you not be a tech hub in your own right, with your own flavor, with your own interesting ideas, and your own culture? Well, yeah, well, I think, well, well first of all, the comparison <laughs> to Silicon Valley is, um, I, I think it's kind of passe in the sense that every city has its own characteristics. Every city has the economy of that city is about the, you know, the businesses that have sort of grown up there organically. And I think what calling it you know, another Silicon Valley is, is a bit doing us injustice because each city has its own character and flavor. Um, what's unique, though, is that um, it's more about the urban cluster now. I think people are congregating more in cities. Like I, I spent 13 years in Silicon Valley and 13 years in London. So in my whole career, I've been in both places. And I never lived in the valley. I always lived in San Francisco and commuted down. So as the sort of the types of businesses that are born um, become much more, um, you know, cloud-based or application-based type businesses, it, you don't have to be in a sprawling industrial campus. You can be anywhere in the world. But clustering in cities where you can meet after work and have conversations with other entrepreneurs and investors and people in, with similar likes and interests is what really sort of grows that momentum. And I think back to the question on um, governments and cities, I think everything that we're trying to do in the UK is, is on a national level. So the policies that have been developed for startups help small businesses anywhere in the country. So it's a great example of how, you know, addressing resources and, you know, gathering information and, and providing resources for one sector really helps the overall economy and adds to the, you know, the economic development of the whole country. And so, looking at the, the state of Europe in economic terms is a bit difficult to be polite about it in some ways, but how do you attract investors? How do you encourage investors either internally or how do you attract them from outside of that and reassure them that it would be a good idea to invest in Europe? Claire? Well, I think there has been, of course, this, the, the macroeconomic situation is globally a bit gloomy at the, at the moment. But um, I think uh, there, there have been some uh, uncertainty about the future of Eurozone. I think this uncertainty are over now because we have taken the full measure of what uh, solidarity in the Eurozone and uh, the solidity of the Eurozone was uh, meaning. So decisions have been taken in the past weeks, months. Uh, by uh, European governments to uh, make sure that the Eurozone stays uh, um, together, united, solidar with big solidarity, soli financial solidarity. So I think the situation is now on the verge of going better and, and, and is quite reassuring for, for uh, foreign investors. And uh, I think the, the focus must be on how we uh, envision the future of our economies. And I think what I, I, uh, I'm concerned about and what I'm trying to do in my everyday work is to really put the stress on the, the economy of knowledge that we want to develop in front of the, the, the uh, higher education system, how we're going to modernize the state, how we're going to uh, think uh, about the, these clusters that we're trying to create in our own way, original ways uh, in Russia or in London or in Paris, it's different everywhere. We don't want to, 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 to copycat the Silicon Valley. We want to develop an ecosystem that is uh, 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 really um, meets the needs of our businesses and uh, of our countries. So I think it's more by being, you know, really focused on innovation, on higher education, on, on the future that we can reassure and also to, to uh, bring maybe stability to the uh, environment, the, finan the financial, the low environment, uh, that we can reassure the uh, investors and, uh, and well, give them some motivation to invest in, in our countries. Mm -hmm. Is it a similar situation for Russia? Well, I think we're in slightly better shape. We've been growing about you know steady pace of 4% a year. So 
thanks to high oil prices, of course, but still uh, we have the same growth problems, right? So we do need to make sure that, you know, it's going to be knowledge-based economy, and therefore we um, understand that at some point when, you know, state won't be able to support so much uh, development, um, we can still provide uh, an assurance to the investors and some guarantees, and also an access to the um, highly trained and educated talent. So this is um, what I believe, you know, one of the goals of Skolko as well. Uh, we just show, we, I think we have about 45 venture capital funds that already committed about $500 million uh, to invest in the few, uh, next few years. So this shows that not only what we provide as a infrastructure, as a, you know, tax reductions and other benefits, but also the guarantees themselves also work some magic. And I believe this is what the role of the government is. To when we attract the investor, we say that, you see, for the next about, what, six years, we're going to have Putin, it means stability, so you might as well invest into some startups. <laughs> and um, that's um, the, the status quo at this moment. Mm -hmm. And so with the UK, there is an interest, certainly, in tech city. Yeah. Is that widening out for the rest of the country as well when it comes to investment, do you think? Well, I, I think it takes time. I mean, when I think about my years in Silicon Valley, everyone in Silicon Valley seems to believe that they can start something and have success. It's almost that, I don't know, that myth of Horatio Alger, like anybody can build the biggest business in the world. And it's a mentality shift. And I think only through sort of, you know, examples of success do people get the confidence and through skills training and, and what we, the partnership with the universities and giving people that sort of the training and the um, experience that they can do it, that they can start something and have that kind of success. And that takes time. It doesn't turn around overnight. You know, it's, it's very culturally embedded in, in very, you know, cities and, and the way people are brought up and the way they're educated. And I think we, you know, we need to focus on success and then success breeds success. And it gives people, other people, the courage to start. I mean, if you look at, the, the big um, sort of um, positive part of the economy, and I think Fleur mentioned it, is the small business growth during this difficult time because, you know, larger companies are no longer expanding at the levels they were to support, you know, the growth. So people are taking that step, and we need to be able to build the policies and, the, you know, what they need, the programs they need to support that. So it's about believing you can start something. Okay, well, hopefully also uh, success will breed more success with a panel like this. And if there are girls watching who are in <laughs> education in science, technology, mathematics, and I am going to keep saying that to people, then look at what you can do, pretty much. So a uh, big round of applause for our ladies, please. And that would be great. The final word from Skolkovo. <laughs> yeah, you just wanted, wanted to end up with the joke um, that I heard from a um, uh, you know, well-known investor and the pioneer, Yossi Vardy. He says that <laughs> we are not only working on the audience of the youngsters, but we're also working on the audience of their mothers. So it's important that the mothers uh, want their children to become not only lawyers or government workers or bankers, but also to become entrepreneurs. So it's important That's to right. deliver that message as well. And I just wanted to you know, lighten up the discussion for that. Yeah. And <laughs> and one point. more thing, we have yeah. a workshop the next two days. Um, Tech City, we have an entrepreneur's workshop here. Oh, mostly women, by the way, <laughs> helping, helping startups, you know, answer your questions, help you, you know, through any, anything you want to know about Tech City and locating in London or in, in the UK in general. So um, from 10 to 4 tomorrow and Thursday. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks. Nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. <laughs> Thank you. I think government has never looked uh, as good as, uh, as pretty, <laughs> and I would say it's the pretty government panel. Thank you very much for, uh, for joining. And I, you. I, I, you should have competed more, though. No. Like, oh, like you sold gentle. the web to London, right, Joanna? Well, yes, Women are collaborating. We're very gentle, girls. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you, Merci. Thank you very much for the Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Geraldine. Thank you. Well, à bientôt, à Merci ce soir. À bientôt. Thank you.